What's up people, this is Nakul back with the Honest Review video of Yaomi Redmi Note. Today I'm going to tell you pros and cons about this phone. Basically what a normal day user would like and dislike in this phone. So let's not waste any more time and get started. So first of all I'll be telling all pros about this phone. The things that I like in this phone and anything any normal day user would also like. And the first thing is the screen. It has 5.5 inches of screen and the resolution is 720 by 1280 pixels so it's HD. And it's quite nice, it's quite brilliant I would say. As soon as you turn on the screen you can notice that how sharp and crisp the screen is. It's really good. The color and contrast levels are really nice as you can see. So this is the first thing that I like in this phone. Moving on to the next thing which is the feel of the phone. When you hold this device you don't feel that it's a 9000 rupees phone. You actually feel like you're holding a premium phone like a 20 or 30,000 rupees phone because it's so big. The screen is so great and the quality and everything, you have 13 megapixel camera, you have front camera which is 5 megapixel, you have large screen and it's HD and you have this nice rigged backlight in the capacitive button. So you don't feel like that you are holding a entry level smartphone, you feel like you are holding a premium smartphone. So that's the second thing I like in this phone. Now moving on to the third thing that I like in this phone and I also mentioned this thing in the unboxing video of this phone and that is the light in the capacitive buttons as you can see. These three capacitive buttons does light up and the light is red actually as you can see. So it feels really nice and you don't have this light in Xiaomi Redmi 1S and in Huawei Honor Holy or Asus Zenfone 5. So it's really nice to have this backlight in this phone. Moving on to the fourth thing now which was there in the Xiaomi Redmi 1S also and it's there in this phone also which is the light mode as you can see over here. Turning on this mode everything becomes very simplified and large so that old age and elderly people can see and use the phone better. Right now I won't turn it on and show you because that would waste even more time. If you want to see this feature then you can see it in the review video of my Xiaomi Redmi 1S so you can go there and see this feature. Moving on to the fifth thing which I like about this phone is the notification LED. Now I don't know if you guys remember or not but in Xiaomi Redmi 1S the notification LED was right over here beneath the home button. But in this phone it's right over here besides the camera. I'll just show you. The thing that I like about LED in this phone is that it's quite large and prominent and the blinking rate is really nice so you can see if there is a missed call or anything. I'll just show you. So as you can see. It's quite large and it's just besides the camera and you can even customize the LED and the color if you go in the settings over here in notification light as you can see it's turned on. You can customize the colors like in which color you want the LED to blink in when there is a missed call is the unread message. So you can customize over here as you can see blue, red, yellow, green, cyan, white, violet. You have all these colors so you can customize the LED plus it's quite large and big. And the blinking rate is not too fast, not too slow, it's, so it's really nice. Okay, now moving on to the sixth feature that I like about this phone is that it has a call record and a notepad feature in the calling screen itself, just like the Redmi 1S also. So if I make a call and pull out this, so as you can see you have this notepad area. So you can note anything you like, like there is a person telling a number over the phone so you don't have to go all the way home and then notepad so you have this notepad directly in the calling area and then you can record the call also as you can see so this is pretty cool the seventh thing that I like about this phone was also there in the Redmi 1S which is a customizable notification bar you have all these shortcuts and you can even customize them if you go in the more as you can see you can go over here and you can select the bar now they will come at the bottom or you can choose the page so it will be a page and you have all this show connection suite additional settings so you have all this setting and you can customize the notification bar moving on to the eighth thing now that i like about this phone and it was also there in the redmi 1s which is a do not disturb option as you can see over here. So when you just turn it on, call the notification that arrive while your phone is locked will be silenced. You can schedule the time and you can even add the exceptions. So this is pretty cool. Plus there are many things that are good to have 
out of which I'm gonna tell you few right now. Rest I'll leave you to explore it yourself. Like the first thing is that when you turn on mobile data or Wi-Fi, you can have your speed data speed over here right in the notification bar, as you can see. So whatever the data is coming and going, you can see the speed over here. And then you have an option of prevent pocket dials. If you go in the settings display, as you can see, prevent pocket dials lock phone automatically when it's placed in a pocket so that's another cool thing and then you have option of optimizing sound in the settings also when you plug in the headphones you can optimize the sound as you can see over here right now i don't have the headphones plugged in so it's not showing anything but you can optimize all this and you have the equalizer also you can turn it on and off plus you also have the option to wake up the screen by pressing the volume buttons you just have to go in the buttons right over here and as you can see wake up with the volume buttons and you also have these option disable power button menu long press back to take photo and you also have option to customize the backlight in the capacitor button as you can see over here you can turn it on and off you can set the duration and everything so there's quite a lot of features in this phone so that's it for the good parts now these were the main things that i wanted to tell you plus there are many more small things that you can explore yourself now before I start telling you cons about this phone, the bad things, I will tell you about the camera first because there are some good things in the camera and some are bad so I thought why not keep it in the middle of pros and cons. So let's talk about the camera now. First of all let me show you the interface. So over here you have the flash toggle, then you have photo to video toggle, you have the front facing camera over here, as you can see. And at the bottom you have some functions like panorama, audio capture, filters, not much. And then you have HDR and in settings you have camera frame, picture quality, store location info, volume button function, long press shutter button, camera sound, scan QR code, reference line, save to external editing card, advanced settings. Over here you have the simple mode. Auto exposure setting, anti banding, saturation, contrast, sharpness, phase reduction. So, this is the main simple interface of the camera. But if you go in the settings and in advanced settings, and if we turn off the simple mode, then you can have some more options like over here you have the scene mode, audio capture, HDR, night mode, then you have this focus mode and ISO exposure you have your white balance filters scene mode so this is all what you get when you turn off the simple mode and this is the advanced mode now if we talk about the picture quality the quality is really great guys no matter if it's indoor or outdoors the quality is really nice pictures are clear and crisp so there's no problem with that but if you talk about the bad part in the camera then it's in the video if I'll just start recording the video as you can see now you can see there is no flash toggle means I cannot turn on or off flash while I'm recording however you can do that before you start recording and there is no pause button also you can't pause the video plus there is no option to capture pictures while you are recording the video like you can do it simultaneously these days in many phones now so all those options are missing in the video recording that's the bad part about the camera that I was talking about. Plus the video is kind of sluggish no matter if it's indoor or outdoors. When you move the camera around, the video kind of tends to jitter a bit. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But I will surely upload the video sample separately so you can see all that in that sample video. However, I will do include the photo sample that I took from this phone which you can see after this. So as you guys just saw that the pictures are really clear and crisp, there is no problem with that. So really nice camera I would say. So we are done with the camera part and the pro section. Now let's move on to the cons part, the bad things about this phone. And the first thing is that this phone lags. That's right, it does have 1.7 GHz octa core processor, 2 GB RAM. But still this phone lags here and there, I don't know why. 
the right now i'm running a third party launcher it's not the stock ui that comes with the yami phones so right now in this launcher the lag is very less but if we go in the settings the apps like facebook facebook messenger youtube this phone does lag it's not very big of a deal because it's not that huge lag but it's there you can notice it i don't know if you guys use facebook messenger or not but those who use know that it has a floating bubble style conversation and when you try to close that conversation by grabbing that bubble and putting it at right in the middle where this x comes to close it so when you grab that and slide it towards the x sometimes the bubble stuck in the middle of the screen for like some milliseconds or half a second and then it goes to the bottom so i don't know what's the matter but but this one does lag guys so that's the first thing that i don't like about this phone the second thing is that it's too big obviously everybody know that it has a 5.5 inch of display plus you have this bezels over here and here and plus some on the sides also so as you can see my palm is not so small i have a very big hand and you can imagine how big this phone is so this is the second thing that it's too big but obviously if you want to have a bigger screen the phone is going to get big so anyways moving on the third thing that i don't like about this phone is that it's too heavy uh, that's right because it's big it has a 3100 mah battery so obviously it's going to be heavy but still I don't know if you guys saw my earlier video of Lenovo Vibe X2 that phone weighs only 120 grams guys that phone does have 5 inches of display 2300 mah battery but still that was the lightest phone I have ever used but this phone is 200 grams I mean that this is the heaviest phone actually I have ever used moving on to the fourth thing now that I don't like about this phone is the Android version now all you guys know that we are standing at the doorstep of getting Android 5 lollipop but this phone is still running android 4.2.2 jelly bean so this is pretty disappointing if we go in the about so as you can see android version 2.2 so this is pretty disappointing that now that we are about to get lollipop in many of the devices this phone is not even having kitkat and we are still waiting for the kitkat version in this device so it's disappointing and let's move on to the fifth thing and that is that the phone is quite slippery because it has glossy finish back and it's curved so it's good to have curved back because it's easy to hold the device but the back is so slippery that sometimes when you are handling the phone with one hand you tend to lose the device so the back is quite slippery this is the fifth thing that i don't like about this phone now moving on to the sixth thing which i don't like about this phone is the 3d reception Actually, the reception is good. You can make the calls and everything. It's the data speed, the 3G data speed. I don't know what's the matter with this device, but at places where my Moto G receives really nice 3G speeds, this phone drops everything and goes to 10, 20 kbps. I don't know what's the matter. So I don't know if it's just with the my device or it's my SIM or it's my house. I don't know what's the matter. Outdoors, it still performs better, but still Moto G. same places where moto g receives better speed this phone receives really really low speeds so that the sixth thing now moving on to the seventh thing that i don't like about this phone is that there is no option to move apps to sd card again it's a big bummer you only have around 5.5 gb user available out of 8 gb and when you install heavy games like modern combat and real racing you can't move apps and games to sd card so that's a big bummer I was considering to keep this device as my daily device but after knowing this I think I'm going to have to take a pass. The eighth thing that I don't like about this phone is the same as the Redmi One is the vibration, the call vibration when your phone rings is really low. If we compare it to the other devices like Moto G, Asus Zenfone 5 or Lenovo phones, the vibration is only around 60 65% compared to those devices. So sometimes you don't even notice if your phone is on silent and it's ringing in your pocket. So you should be careful because you might miss your call. Moving on to the ninth thing is that the volume level in headphones and bass levels is really low. Not really low, but it is low. Again, compared to my Moto G, I had to go three or four steps down in my Moto G to match the volume of this phone in headphones, and it's really really disappointing, guys, because. Though the quality of the music is really nice, it's acceptable, but it's the level of volume and bass which is low. And when you listen Moto G and 
just after that when you listen to this you feel like you're listening to shit so this is pretty disappointing now let's move on to the 10th thing which i don't like about this phone which is also the last thing in this list is that the camera is again like the Redmi 1s is a bit raised at the back and if not now in two months or three months it's surely gonna get scratched if you don't get any cover on because this is the first thing that's gonna come in contact with the surface when you place your phone like this so you definitely need a cover to protect the back and the camera from being scratched so this was the pros and cons now let's talk about the battery the battery is 3100 mAh and takes around 2 or 2.5 hours to charge from around 15-20% and the backup is also nice you can easily get around 18-20 hours with moderate usage and even more if you use less and be careful about the brightness, uh, data, Wi-Fi. So the battery is on the positive side. The call quality is also good. I didn't face any call drops or anything. The volume is nice in the headset and you can hear other person very clearly. Though it's not exceptional obviously but it's not bad also but it's on the positive side I would say. Now let's talk about the loudspeaker. It's also nice better than Redmi 1S. Obviously not exceptional not like the Moto G first gen but again it's better than Redmi 1S and it's decent enough I would say. So that's pretty much it guys. This was a honest review video of Xiaomi Redmi Note. Let me know if you guys have any questions comment and put them into comment down below plus you can also like me on my Facebook page. If you have any questions, you can directly ask me on my Facebook page. I'll be able to reply you more easily over there. The link of that page will be in the description below. So go and like me there. Thank you for watching guys and subscribe for more videos.